Well, welcome back, New Year. Same old royal drama. Prince Harry again making the palace nervous this week, one week out from the release of his memoir, Spare. And this morning reports Harry's book will do irreparable damage to his relationship with his brother. Let's bring in royal correspondent Camilla Tomini. Camilla, is this going to be the end for Harry and Will, if it isn't already? Well, you say if it isn't already. I mean, one wonders what more is left to say after the couple produced that Netflix documentary, which has been watched by millions over the Christmas period. Uh, we've now got Spare to come. As you say, it's January the 10th that it's due out. And it's going to be, again, a bombshell because apparently it is particularly critical of Prince William, the Prince of Wales. Now, obviously, that's tricky, um, not only for their own relationship, but the monarchy as a whole, because William and Kate are very much seen as the future. Much has been said by Harry and Meghan about them being compared to the couple unfavourably by the media and this idea that it was William and Kate who helped to push them out of the monarchy. It won't fall very well for them at all. However, what's interesting, guys, is... As Harry and Meghan speak more, their popularity seems to be tanking in the UK and William and Kate seems to be rising. We had a poll recently over the weekend which suggested that nearly half of all Brits want Harry to be stripped of his titles. So the more he attacks his brother, the less popular he seems to be in the UK, although how his standing fares in Australia or indeed the US remains to be seen. Uh, King Charles has reportedly fared uh, better than expected. Is this a sign that things are easing with that generation uh, of the monarchy? Well, it could be that, Charles, or it could be the fact that actually it's a bit more difficult, as was the case with Queen Elizabeth II, to criticise a monarch because people are quite protective of the king now. They might not have cared as much about Charles when he was Prince of Wales, but now he's king. He's kind of considered by people who support the monarchy as their king, and therefore it's difficult to criticise him. And it seems as if he, he's not going to take aim just at William, actually. He's also apparently, according to the Sunday Times, going to launch quite a broadside at Kate. So let's see how that goes to him. And to promote this book, he's done another sit-down, Tell All, this time with Anderson Cooper. Yes, he's gone to the CNN host, I think, because Anderson Cooper has got a lot of experience of talking about suicide and depression. I believe his own brother committed suicide. And equally, I think he also has done a lot of coverage in Afghanistan and in war zones. And, of course, that will appeal to Harry as a former military man. CNN seems quite a safe bet. Um, and we know that there's going to be promotional activity around this book because hey, he's got copies to sell. My understanding is that pre-orders are already very high. He's rumoured to be getting, what is, it, what is it, I believe, 36 million for this book. So he needs to do as much promotion as he can to make sure he sells all those copies. Can't see him struggling too much, though. No, I think you do it right. Good name, Spare, as well. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, look, you mentioned the 36 million. You mentioned all the publicity. There are now rumours, and why wouldn't she, that <laughs> Megan is writing her own memoir. Well, why wouldn't she, Charles? Although it's an interesting report, this, in the sense that I think somebody took a bit of a punt over the Christmas period. What should we write about um, yeah. this whole situation? <laughs> and, and the story kind of says, you know, oh, people think it would be a good idea if she did write one. So I don't think she's signed on the dotted line with any publisher. It's just this suggestion that now Harry has come out with Spare, why doesn't she give her own version of events again after Oprah and after Netflix and after Harry's book. Let's hear more from Meghan. <laughs> <laughs> Some details left unturned. Uh, before we go, there are reports that Prince Andrew is bracing for a fresh sex abuse storm when accuser Virginia Dufresne's gag clause is lifted in February. What do we know about that? Well, it's not been a great festive period for Prince Andrew. I don't know if you guys got it over in Australia, but we've just been subjected to Prince Andrew the Musical, which is basically <laughs> the satirical take on everything that's happened in his life in the last couple of years. And obviously it makes for uncomfortable watching. But what was interesting is when he signed that deal with Virginia Jeffrey, as you say, one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims, um, it was suggested that she would have to keep quiet for a period, and I think that was to include perhaps the Queen's illness and subsequent death, but then that she'd be freed up to speak. It's still to be decided whether she'll be able to speak about the allegations against Prince Andrew again, or whether she'll be able to speak in the round, or what she might say, mm. but it does mean that Prince Andrew might yet again have to be braced for very negative headlines. Camilla, I really appreciate your time this morning. Happy New Year to you as well. 